Hello, welcome to this episode of Cardesign.tv. My name is Cor Steenstra. In the previous episode, we showed you the uh, interviews that we had with uh, Dave O'Connell, Dave Merrick, and Roger Zwimek. And amongst others in the interviews, one of the topics was the influence of uh, new design techniques on the actual design of the vehicles. And in uh, this episode, we'll continue that, uh, those conversations with interviews with Chuck Jordan and with Ken Okuyama. Ken Okuyama from Pinifrina, design director, and Chuck Jordan, former vice president of design at uh, General Motors. Uh, we thought the, the interviews were really interesting and we thought their opinions were really valuable. And again, as said before, uh, we would like to get your input on this subject as well, since I think it's really vital for our industry and for uh, the way we use new techniques. So uh, to that extent, we have uh, on, under each episode on our website, we have a little uh, 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 sort of button and a text area where you can uh, type in your, uh, your opinions and then give it as a feedback uh, listed so that everybody else can read it as well. And maybe we can start an interesting discussion about this. The uh, following episode we will uh, extensively have an interview with Patrick Le Coman, amongst others with the same, uh, about the same subject and also uh, we will take a look at the Renault Altica concept that was shown in Geneva this year. So at least for this episode sit back and enjoy and um, hope to see you again for next episode. I'm going to worry about him. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and he's giving me, uh, we did one interview and I wasn't doing this enough. Yeah. I was putting it in the middle so we could both talk. Well, so. he's got to get you trained. You <laughs> he's, know, it's he's like a puppy. Yeah, he's he's got trying to train him. He doesn't have a whip or anything, so I don't, I don't learn very easily. <laughs> okay, what we were talking about was... Uh, Wait, let me get the Chuck Jordan, Vice President of Design, ex-Vice President of Design of General Motors. Of General Motors and... Uh, Chuck is still very much in the business and doing lots of consulting work, and now we're going to ask him some questions. Chuck, we were just discussing design these days. Uh, the, the we were that, talking about the computer yeah. and about uh, Photoshop and, and Alias and all these things that are tools. When I grew up in design, you know, it's strictly a by hand type right. of thing. When you designed a car, you did a full size drawing in pencil, right. not even tape. Yeah. So the world changes and that's wonderful and things have speeded up now. Yeah. And you've got these tools that are, are really quick and accurate, save you a lot of work, but they don't, they are not creative. They are not creative, and too many of what I see today, uh, too many of these these young people, forget that. Yeah. You know, they've got to have an idea to put into that wonderful tool, and then the uh, then the idea gets developed. But it doesn't create ideas; it yeah. just handles ideas fast. Yeah. Uh, and it's a particularly uh, bothersome sometimes when when they'll just design a design a vehicle in uh, in uh, in the tube and then say okay we'll grind it out and then paint the grounded out model yeah. it's not they miss the feeling of the car right. they the miss the yeah. human touch that quality that makes it a piece of art instead of just a big heavy block of apple wood or whatever it is yeah. so so if you were a chief of a studio today would you make the guy's sketch first and, and i think the guy always has to do a sketch first even if it's on toilet paper uh -huh. yep. you know or right. a napkin or whatever i think it's to to get an idea to know where he's going and then he can has the advantage of using these tools that are fantastic so so basically sketch the idea out uh Maybe do a, an alias model based on a sketch, mill out a clay model, and then refine the clay? Uh, basically, that's right. I yeah. think you've got to have the idea going in, and you can use use these uh, techniques, but in uh, when it comes out full size, there's something about a full size model yeah. when you see it right. that'll always surprise you, and you've got to be able 
once you get your design through the process to refine it and get the feeling right yeah. in so, that three-dimensional hunk of stuff. Right, so you really want to walk around and look at it. It's not like the power wall, th- the full-size thing you see on the power wall is rotating. That's not quite good no, enough, is that it? that does not do it. Yeah. That does not do it. A lot of people would like it to be, yeah. but it isn't isn't the same as seeing a hunk of stuff and rubbing your hand over the surfaces right. and getting the surfaces developed so they're right. That takes a good sculptor yeah. as so, well as the designer's eye. So so a good designer and a good sculptor is is worth his weight it's in gold. Essential. Yeah. Essential, isn't it? Essential. I, 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 I don't care what yeah. techniques you use, yeah. <laughs> but they're both essential to doing something that's uh, more a work of art than just uh, four wheels and a lump. So what we have is basically a set of new tools, and if we use them the right way, we can still make them work. Yeah. It's just, you it's can, just. If you use them the right way, you can get quality design faster. Yeah. But don't skip the important steps where the human taste and judgment and a human hand is part of the equation. Yeah. Well, thanks, Chuck, for the... Yeah, I know that, yeah. And, uh, and thanks for your, your, yeah. uh, your input and your, and your comments. And enjoy the show, Chuck. Yeah, all right, thanks. So, thank you.
Okay, Ken Okayama of Pininfarina Design. What is your title, Ken? Uh, I'm a design director of Pininfarina yeah. in Italy. We've been discussing with other designers today about the design techniques today using computers, using power walls and milling machines and alias softwares and stuff. Tell me about Pininfarina Design Studio. Do they have all the state-of-the-art tools? Um, because we work for all the clients all over the world, we have to have all the common tools that they use. So we can use not only the digital tools and the manual tools of the sketching everything that we do, because the digital is part of your life anyway, but even the clay modeling, and we have uh, all the, uh, we call it Applewood, which is bundle basically. Right. We do entire car with Applewood. And you have to prepare all the cars in a way that the clients prepare for their clinic test and whatever too, so we do everything. Do you, do you mill the Applewood, or, or is it hand done? Uh, in our in our old days, we used to do this called the Peony de Forma, which is three view drawing, mechanical, technical drawing, and the uh, cut the sections and used to blow up to full size and do that uh, the hand uh, working. But nowadays, we do everything in the digital, mill that. But don't forget, you have to modify it yeah. by hand. Yeah. You have to do that. There's no substitute for a full size model and hand finished for and then redigitize and put back in the computer. I never said that there is no substitution. Actually, they will be. Yeah. When the hologram is so advanced, and maybe technology is gonna maybe uh, give you the uh, the way of uh, uh, appreciating and the evaluating your digital data in a quickest and the best way, in a way that you could almost can't you almost can't tell what's digital, what's what's real. Then you don't need the, uh, this milling process anymore. But at this point, milling is the best way because you can feel and touch. And the, uh, look at from all the angles, then then you can you can modify by hand. But the power wall, power wall is not there yet, is it? Uh, it's not quite yeah. there yet. 
it, it's coming, it's getting much better, but I think uh, we need a breakthrough technology still. And uh, are you guys still doing a lot of work for Ferrari? Oh, yeah, we do. That's, uh, that's maybe one-third of our job that we do, not uh, revenue-wise, but definitely work-wise, because that's that's a uh, collaboration that we do, and the, uh, uh, we work on constantly two, three different models of uh, show cars and production and so on. So, on. so now, since Ferrari has their own design team, do they end up doing the feast model and you guys do the creative work, or how does it um, well, actually, the design team, as you know, at least we call it good t 30 to 50 people. And the uh, designers and the engineers and the uh, you know modelers and so on and so on to create a team. Ferrari as a company is not big enough to do that. So design team for Ferrari, I work with the Donato Coco as a friend, actually, and the uh, colleague. But uh, they have a small team of uh, two to three people. And the, they set sometimes a direction, and we uh, discuss, and they come to us, and the... Uh, you know, uh, we come up with the uh, design solution. And sometimes, uh, if they want to see some very different taste, then they have total right to go to uh, Giugiaro or Bertone, other company too. But luckily, we've been winning every time we worked on Ferrari in the past. The competition. That's yeah. been the way it is. There is no written contract. We have been winning every every single car since uh, 308 uh, GT4 uh, Dino. And the, hopefully, we will be winning too. A question about the uh, Enzo. I read and have heard that Michael Schumacher had something to do with the design. How much did he have to do with the overall shape? He came in at the very end of the design process when the car was done because he's a driver. He's not a designer. He's not an engineer. So when the car's done, he comes and gives us some opinions. But uh, not in the design process. That was, uh, you know, we're like architects. We don't go around and ask people what exactly architects have to do. We just give them vision and the, uh, show them what we believe in, just like we did to Michael Schumacher. And he gave us some suggestions, for, mostly for suspensions and weight distributions and things like that. The, the Italians used to have a big edge on the other guys with package. They always had the lowest car that always looked the best because it was so low. It was hard to get in and out of, but it looked good because it was low. But almost everyone's gotten there now. What kind of tricks do you have from Italian designers that, that keep you guys on the edge? Um, it's a vision for the future and the, in a way, kind of like uh, old maestro used to decide on everything. So you can take, uh, not taking chances, but the, quite a bit of, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, the direction is uh, very strong, decided by one person. We still do that. My job is a design director. I ask for opinions from my, my bosses and the designers and the colleagues and the, uh, uh, the suppliers. But at the end, I decide on the design, and that we think is uh, necessary. And the, another thing is, the, uh, nowadays, we're living in a world that is uh, more and more complicated. We add on things, but we have to start taking away things. We have to maybe willing to sacrifice certain aspects of your life. If you're willing to sacrifice, for example, entry egress of the car, that you can really lower the car because once you sit in the car, as long as you get the visibility, you don't you don't need a height. Right, right. If you're almost so. laying down or something. Yeah, you, you can do it. So, but if, if if you think about different car companies these days doing retro design, you guys haven't done that, which which I'm glad you haven't. But although, if if any company could do it, Ferrari could do it because they had some of the best cars in in the 50s and 60s with the P4s and and then the GTOs and things. You ever guess? You ever thought about doing that sort of thing? Well, I uh, only uh, allow me to say that uh, there's something coming out this summer at the Pebble Beach Concourse, which is uh, sort of in the direction of what you just just said. It's not that uh, we don't do heritage or design based on the heritage, strong heritage. We don't want to do direct retro design because we want to respect the original design. Doing something in 2006, 2007, we want to give the new respect to this new car, new product of this year. Yet, respecting something original in the past is, uh, we enjoy doing that quite a bit too. So, depends on the clients, depends on type of car, we're getting a little bit closer sometimes to the heritage. At the same time, when you do future production car, we don't want to look at the, uh, the past, almost uh, none at all. We just take some as a hint, develop that toward the... Uh, future technology, innovation. Uh, we always constantly looking at the innovation uh, for the for the future. So um, that's something we do for production, but at the same time when you do something for the special client, 
you could maybe allow yourself to get a little closer to the past. Yeah. And I wouldn't do retro, but something a little closer to heritage. Yeah. If you think about some cars, like a 275 GTB. Well, I wouldn't. Yeah. I wouldn't say which one, but. Well, not which one, but I'm <laughs> saying it, those, those are beautiful cars. Yeah. The yeah, shapes and the and, and the surface development is so beautiful on those cars. Yeah. And you guys are you guys have that now, like in the Enzo, but it's a different sort of look. It's not. It's more hard machine looking, and probably developed more in a wind tunnel than the guys used to do. They used to just fill the car probably and make more voluptuous curves and surfaces. How much of the car these days is designed in a wind tunnel? Wind tunnel is part of our life and it's not going to go away, but we're getting much more efficient. Before, we have to have a certain form to make it aerodynamic, but the aerodynamics is, is much more flexible, yet complicated than it seemed to be. So it doesn't have to have the same form. When you look at birds, as we always say, they all have different kind of form. That's the same thing for the automobiles. For example, you could have the uh, kind of like round tail, before it was almost uh, you know no no to have round tail for aerodynamic shape but nowadays by having little fins and little gaps you could actually make it much more aerodynamic so we have all this know-how now yeah. compared to 20 years ago so you can almost make it look like the way you want it to look and still be really if, uh, aerodynamic efficient exactly uh, one more question uh, the design cues from the 80s are soft aerodynamic organic looking in the 90s it became soft cars with hard edges and now it's more of a uh, precision machine look that everyone's after what do you think is next after the precision machine look well I can give you a straight answer before in 80s and early 90s there was a trend of design from round to square back to round in different way again right. uh, sometimes there is a design trend of a maybe round surface with square lines because people should distinguish actually the difference between line squareness and the surface squareness. But at the same time, nowadays, beyond 2000, what's getting more important is to have a strong identity of your own brand. And your brand is different compared to others. Therefore, I don't think today you can find one design trend that, that we're going for round or square. Those days are gone. Yeah. We have round, round design and square design at the same time now. But there's a strong focus for the quality and details because car is not cheap. Right. And we should respect people and those people investing so much money, they want to have a certain quality. And those quality will add the satisfaction to your lives. So yeah. those things will not go away. So what's coming is even see more difference based on this identity of the brand, based on uh, production technology. We talked about the coach building today. Now, the technology allows us to use maybe not just a simple uh, sheet metal stamping, but all the plastics and different type of uh, stamping technology could allow you to have fantastic quality yet different style. So that's what's going to happen. Mixing of materials like carbon fibers and, and uh, sheet metal together? Yeah. yeah. Well, Ken, thank you very much. It was thank very you. nice to take the time to interview with us. Thank you, Danny. Right, you're welcome.
watching this episode of Car Design TV. My name is Cor Steenstra, and from all of us here, stay creative.